Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another fun mod, this time in the form of Burn Together, which is being made and has been being made for quite some time now by the good old Bahamuto D. Ah, you know, if it's a mod made by that fella, it's gonna be good, and in fact, this has been good for about a year, uh, but I haven't had really the chance to take a look at it because, well, there's always just so many mods coming out that I, 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 I can't get them all, uh, but this one, I wanted to finally take a look at it because... As of just a couple of days ago, it finally updated to point nine. So once again, we have burned together in the game, well, available to be to have in your game. And well, what this mod adds in is the ability to control more than just one ship at a time. It, that's glorious. Oh, so freaking glorious. I mean, there are mods that allow you to, like, record a flight path, and then it'll play it back, but this is actually allowing you to control two ships at once, or or more than two ships, rather. You could have a whole freaking fleet, and you'd be good to go. So let's head into the VAB and take a look at the glorious part that makes it possible, and you'll find it in the Command and Control section, which, let's just throw on a random capsule here, Go back to command and control, and we have this burn together automated ship command. And as the description says, allow ships to communicate, follow, and leader commands. And you just pop this thing onto whatever ship you have out in space. And it's 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 just a glorious little radio stuck to the side of this thing. And this is where all the power lies. Any ship with this attached to it you will be able to control remotely from another ship. Now, it's not exactly remotely because you can't pilot the two independently at the same time. It's your ship will basically have its movements copied to whatever ships are following it. So if we had this command pod as the leader and other command pods as the followers, they would simply mimic whatever it was that we were doing, which may not sound like much, but that allows you to control a whole fleet at once. And well, uh, this is the only part, so that's all we have for the VAB. So now it's time to actually see how it works in action. And so I've set up a couple of things here. The first is a little grouping of little rovers over here by the runway. Let's just go in, well, I guess fly, technically drive these things. And rovers are still apparently a little buggy because, uh, you know, they're on the ground. It's a lot easier to handle things when they're, you know, in space. But we have three glorious rovers here, all with the little burn together controller here and you'll see we have uh, several options we can set the leader which would make any of the followers you know copy the leader's path we can set a device as or a rover rather as a follower but you have to have a leader first if you say select this one as a follower it could not find a leader so you have to select a leader first then set the others as followers or, if you don't want to go through all of your ships, say you have like a fleet of 10 that you need to get to Duna, you can just click All Follow Me. And any ship in range that has the Burn Together uh, controller attached to it will start following you. So if we click this, there we go, you'll see both of these, their button, or their light rather, on their controllers turned blue. Uh, when they're off and you aren't using Burn Together, like if we turn this off, you'll see that the light is red. That light went to red as well. That one, for some reason, stayed as blue. Interesting. It is still somewhat of a work in progress, but yeah, I don't think he's going to be following anyone. But the when they're off, it's red. When you're the leader, it's green, which... There we go, back on to green, and anyone following you, set all to follow, they are blue. And so that's how you know who is who by just the color choice on here. Now can we, of course, as I just used here, we can turn burn together off, and it should shut all of them down, but that one does not want to cooperate. That is the darndest thing. There we go, we'll set you back as the leader, follow all. And then the last option we have here is toggle, Action Group Mimic. 
Now, right now, the ships will mimic your controls. So if you throttle up, throttle down, turn left, right, pitch, uh, even use RCS, anything like that, but they won't automatically copy your action groups because maybe you want certain ships to do certain action groups. But if you do want your other ships to mimic whatever you have set as your action groups, they will do it as well. So if, say we turn that on, now all of these should have mimic on as well. And I set one to turn on the lights that we have on the front of these rovers. So if I hit one, all three rovers turn on their lights and that is wonderful. And if you have any other action groups, uh, you can do the same thing here. Now, uh, it's it works for the most part. It doesn't seem to work with everything. Uh, originally, when it first came out, I think in version 3 was when the action group was added. It was just for lights and landing gear. Uh, but uh, pretty much anything you can shove into an action group that's stock. Basically everything stock in an action group should work with doing this, so you should be good to go. But you're probably more interested in the controlling aspect, so well, here we go, we're gonna go forward. And what each of these will do is mimic our movements, and they will try and stay at the same speed as you. I believe there's like a .1 meter per second difference. But yeah, they will mimic your movements and your actions and try and stay in the relatively same position. So this one's trying basically calculating where its position and speed should be from me to maintain the distance that it originally was back there when we were parked. Now you'll notice there is a bit of a lag between when I do my actions and when they do it, which if you have them staggered kind of oddly like we have here, this one's kind of close to me. So when we turn, uh, there's the possibility of maybe some uh, <laughs> some knocking about and crashing together, which is not something you want to happen, so you'd want your ships to be a bit more spaced out, and well, even if they are spaced out, we might run into an issue like here, where I'm gonna... There's the potential of me clipping into that other rover. Oh, oh my god, we've locked wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, with the, because of the lag that it has between them, which is understandable. I mean, you're you're controlling this ship, and then your actions are being relayed to the others. So there is bound to be a little bit of lag. But keep that in mind when controlling your ships, so that you don't end up causing accidents between your various crafts. But all in all, they should work quite well if you have them spaced out nicely or perhaps if you have them all in a single file line doing a convoy. Like imagine that, you have a whole line of like eight rovers on the moon and that you need to move supplies to another base. You can just convoy them all up and you're good to go. And that's, well, that's just glorious, but that's not all they can do if we stop these fellas and head back to the space center. We will head up into orbit where I have two ships up there, which is where I really love this mod. The, the rover thing is amazing. I really love that because like I said, just imagine that having a convoy of rovers going across a planetary surface. But my favorite thing for this mod, let's actually speed up time so we're, we have these ships in the sun is with ships, because imagine you're wanting to build a colony on Duna. Normally, you'd have to send ship after ship after ship to get to where you need to be so that you have everything you need ready in orbit to then land on the surface. Well, not with Burn Together, you can go and send an entire fleet of ships off to Duna and you should be good to go with all of them. Oh my, we've we've spaced out a little bit since uh, <laughs> I put them up here. I rendezvoused them a lot closer than this. But hey, we should be fine if I... Ah, there's the controller. Do this as the follow me. Excellent, we are still well within range. So that space test ship did get the single, a signal. And if we turn on our SAS and uh, RCS and do prograde, there you go. You see the other ship in the back also turning like we are or not. Ooh, it's having some issues over there. It's trying to turn. Well, that's interesting. I haven't actually had this issue yet. It's trying to turn, but it doesn't seem to quite want to. 
I think it's maybe waiting for us to get into position. It might be because I used these controls here. If I would have manually controlled the RCS, I think we would have been fine. So let's give this a second. Let's turn that off. Go to that ship. Do prograde. You are not set to... Oh. No, no. You, you should be going... Huh. I think I may have broken something. Hold on. Let's make sure this is off. Turn off SAS and RCS. Because it's still pointing towards the retrograde point. Interesting. Okay, well, I'll just spin it around manually. That is the damnedest thing. That is new. I have not had that issue yet. Ha. Huh. Well, note to self for the future. Let's turn off the SAS here. And... Oh, I, that's why. For some reason, our... Our controls are reversed. That's why I just had a little bit of an issue turning this baby around. So that is interesting. I must have done something wrong rather than the uh, burn together messing up. So there's something to note. Make sure perhaps that your ships are all pointing in the same direction before you start or things could go wrong. So let's uh, turn off our RCS and SAS. Turn this back on. There we go. We have everyone sorted. And you'll see he is using his RCS because when in space, your following ships use RCS to maintain their relative speed and distance. Um, so that is something, again, make sure your ships have plenty of RCS. And to test our action groups, we should have one extending our solar panels, which mine have extended, his has not. That is interesting. Give me a moment, I'm gonna pause the video and see if perhaps, because it is turning it on, but it's not activating things as it should. Give me a moment, I'll bring you guys back when I think I fix this. Okay, we are back and I'm pretty sure I have things figured out. Uh, for some reason, between setting these ships up and coming back to them to show them off, that rear ship's controls seem to have gotten corrupted somehow. I don't know why, but whatever button I pushed did not do what it was supposed to do. And so I think that uh, minor corruption is what screwed up the process. So now that I have re-put them into space using hyper edit, let's set this guy as leader. All follow me. There we go. We have the uh, target of space test back here. He is our friend and now following us. So let's turn on the action group mimicking and turn on the lights. Excellent, because we, we are kind of heading into the uh, dark side of the planet now because it took me so long to figure that out. And so the lights have come on, excellent. And now, put on our solar panels. And both of them should be coming on just fine. Perfect, perfect, I like it. And yeah, these two ships, now in space, should be you know perfectly fine for going wherever it is you need them to go to and who who wouldn't want that so we could if we wanted turn on our engines here and he does seem to be drifting off i think this might be a little buggy still considering as i said it was just added into a 0 0.90 just a few days ago because yeah he's a. Uh, He's gone wonky. Let's turn on the SAS and RCS. Maybe that'll solve his issue. Oh, he does seem to be correcting. Oh, or we're screwed. Or or that ship is indeed screwed. Uh, so yes, there may still be a few bugs that need working out, but we do now have two ships in orbit that are flying technically together. They are, <laughs> and one is, it seems like it's trying to get on course, but is having some issues doing so that might be... Like I said, either because of how, you know, some bugs in the system right now, or it could be I've set up the ship completely wrong. But, one thing to note, one of the, the bits in the mod at the moment, is when you do time accelerate, they should... Oh yes, we're under acceleration, so that's not going to work. Let's throttle down. Time accelerate. 
Your ships should be controlling with one another, but oh yes, since that ship is kind of screwed, I think it just crashed into the planet. <laughs> oh boy. I think that this isn't working because I've done something wrong. Uh, I did have these working fine earlier today when tr you know testing everything out, but uh, it's always the fun of making videos. Sometimes, sometimes you do just screw things up. And uh, yes, at least you did see that that ship was controlling with us for some of the time. <laughs> I do believe that it has, has crash landed onto the planet now. That is the strangest thing. I'm not entirely sure why that did happen. Um, but if it was properly working, when in time warp, the ships should stick together. Uh, and so, for instance, well, actually, he still apparently is around. So he hasn't crashed into the planet yet. He's just gone way off course. Oh boy. But if the ships were properly working, um, again, most likely my fault. If, say, you were heading to Duna, they would stick together for the journey and should come out of the journey uh, roughly where you left them in their position to one another. And also another feature is that whichever ship is the slowest in the group your lead ship will be throttled down to that speed. So if like your lead ship is really fast, but you've got a cargo tug in the back of the convoy, uh, your lead ship will be auto throttled down to that speed, uh, which is uh, a good feature to have. So you don't accidentally leave things behind. Now, if only it was controlling properly and I didn't send that off onto a way wrong course, but let's, Let's head back to the stuff on the ground, which is <laughs> in a somewhat slightly different position than when we left because I was trying to figure out if I had done something wrong when we were on the ground here. Where did those go? Why are they over there? <laughs> um... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> did I leave one of them running? Oh no, 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 it just on the on the map over there was wrong. <laughs> I was about to say, did I leave one of them running and they decided to take a trip to the mountains? That uh that would be interesting. But yes, at the very least this part does seem to be working just fine and dandy. So for the time being, yeah, there might be some bugs still left in it. It did just get updated to point nine. So uh, the rovers definitely seem to be working as intended. I mean, I am quite liking this, though even they are getting a little wiggle in there. Huh. So yeah, there might still be a few bugs to work out. But overall, still a very cool mod, even if just for land. I mean, again, imagine sending a convoy of stuff on Duna or the moon, and, uh, you know, you've got one full of Kerbals, another full of colony supplies, another full of scientific equipment, and you just drive along the planet's surface all together, and then set up camp once you reach where you need to be, and that... That is just wonderful. Now in space, well, perhaps there are still a few bugs. Hopefully those do get worked out, uh, unless I just did something entirely wrong in how I put did the stuff up there and built them. That is always a possibility. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure you know they should have worked though because I I did test all of this earlier and I did have a ship working just fine, but yeah even these they seem to be wiggling a little bit. Once I correct over here and start going straight, they seem to go back the other direction. So perhaps the mimicking isn't quite up to where it should be at this point, which might have something to do to, again, it just recently getting a compatibility uh, patch for point nine. So uh, still though, definitely a fun mod to check out, whether you're in space or flying a plane, you could do formation flying if you are skilled in that sort of thing, which I am not, or rovers, any way you go, it is a very cool mod, and I do hope that you go and check it out for yourself, which if you do, follow the link in the description as always. And uh, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed this episode today, and of course, that you come back for the next when we will be looking at yet another fun mod. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.